So here on Designs by IFR, we build a number of custom PCs, but we have never built a beginner's how to build a PC guide. So that's what I wanna do for you guys today. And for those of you who do know how to build a PC, feel free to tag along and watch the video and answer any of the concerns that people might have down in the comments below. And for those of you who are new and don't understand anything, we will be taking it slowly, step by step. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm sure you guys will get the replies. Here's what the finished product looks like. Let's go ahead and show you how to do it. And I'll leave all links to the parts that I used in this build down in the description below so you guys can go check them out on Amazon. I hope you all enjoy. So when building a gaming PC, some handy tools to have would be a pair of scissors, scissors to open boxes, to cut zip ties when you're doing your cable management at the back, and so on, and of course a screwdriver. Pretty much every single thing needs to be screwed into the PC, so very handy to have a screwdriver. Some do require some Allen keys, however this particular case does not, so if you do have some Allen keys on hand as well, that could be helpful depending on the type of components that you are working with. Step one is case prep. Take the back panel and the front panel off like you guys can see here. I've already done that. And just sit those to the side. You don't wanna get those scraps or anything. We won't need to see them until the end. Also makes it easier for installing stuff if we've got nothing in the way. Number two inside the case should be a little accessories box just like this one containing various screws that we will need throughout the PC build to install the motherboard, the power supply, things like that. Keep this very handy. We'll just sit this to the side right now because we will be using it very shortly. So to start things off, we will prep the motherboard. The motherboard will be installed first, followed by the power supply. So what we need to do is we need to install the CPU into the motherboard and of course put our RAM in. Now today we are working with the MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard. And we are pairing this with an Intel i7-6700K CPU. Now the K means that this CPU is able to be overclocked, something that you beginners do not need to worry about. And we have a total of 16 gigabytes of T-Force Delta RGB white memory. Now as a gamer, you want at least eight gigabytes. I do recommend 16 gigabytes, especially for the latest titles and games. It's starting to become a bit more strenuous on the PC these days, whereas a few years ago, eight gigabytes was the standard that you could get away with for a gaming PC. So let's put it all together. So here you have an IO shield. We're gonna to have to keep this for later. This will have to be installed in the case so that the motherboard IO can slot into place. So keep this handy, keep this to the side. And once we return to the case, we will get that installed. So once you have your motherboard, put everything back in the box so you don't lose everything and then use the box itself to lay your motherboard on. So now that the motherboard is out of the box, you can see we have our 24 pin socket here and we also have an eight pin socket there. Now, once we get into the power supply, we need to remember that so that we use the right cables. This is a fairly standard design layout. All motherboards will have CPU socket. They're gonna have the PCI socket. That's where all your graphics cards plug in. And of course, we're going to have the memory sockets where all of the RAM will plug into. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to install a CPU. Here we have our CPU. Let's uh, take it out of the box and we'll show you guys how to install it. So on the CPU, you guys will see a small little triangle, a gold triangle down the bottom of one of the corners. Now, this little triangle is very important to remember. This corresponds with the triangle which shows on the motherboard. We have a little triangle on the socket here, so therefore the CPU should slot in so that the two triangles are at the same side. Now let's go ahead. All you have to do is push down this pin, pull it out, release it, pull this up and pull this back. Now we have two little notches on the outside and we have two little notches on the PCB on the CPU. These will slot in, making sure that the triangle aligns down the bottom corner. So let's slot that in. Don't force it either, just let it drop in and you guys will see that it will fit into place nicely. There we go, it just dropped into place. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it's in there properly. And of course, we can go ahead and just like you opened it, let's close this up. Make sure that this latch is under the screw on the motherboard. Push this down, will require a bit of force. This will pop off, which is what we want. And then put the latch underneath. 
Keep this, put it away safely. I put it in my CPU box, just in case we need warranty for the motherboard, you have to put that cover back on. So now that the CPU is installed, let's go ahead and install the RAM. Simply pull back these latches where you need to put your RAM sticks in. In this case, we are using two. Some of you guys might have four, and you need to align it with the socket, just like so, put one end in, then the other, and then push both ends down until you hear it click, and these little tabs push back in by themselves. That will ensure that the RAM stick is nice and snug in its position. Do it again for the second one. Make sure it's in nice and snug, make sure it's clicked in, and that's the RAM installed, pretty simple. So the motherboard is prepped and ready to go. Let's actually install it inside of the case. So remember how I said before to put the IO shield to the side. This is the part where we're going to need it. So grab that IO shield. You'll see a little cutout in the case right where I'm slotting this in now. And basically you need to just push that IO shield into place before we install the motherboard. Just like so. So here's where the accessories box becomes very important. We need to install our motherboard standoff screws so that we can screw the motherboard in. The motherboard standoff screws are little hexagon shaped like screws which will go right into the back of the motherboard tray. You can see we already have one pre-installed right here so we do not have to worry about this one. Now we are using a standard ATX size motherboard which means we need to slot them into the ATX slots. If you guys do not understand that concept then if you have a look at the case guide or you look up the mounting positions on Google, that should be able to give you guys a bit of a graph. Or you could just simply line your motherboard up in there just to see where you need to install these screws. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now that that step is done, we can go ahead and install our motherboard. Installing our motherboard, we need to simply line up all of the screw holes on the motherboard and try and get all of the IO through the IO shield that we installed before. So you can see that I've got this installed and what I wanna try and do is get one of the corners in first so that it holds it nicely in place, which means I can simply screw all of the rest in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we have the motherboard installed, let's go ahead and install our power supply. Now when looking for a power supply, a little thing I like to go for is, if you are using one GPU and you are a beginner, you're obviously going to be using a standard Z, H or B board. And usually you will have one GPU. So I would go for 600 watts plus for that system. However, if you are going for the more higher end X299 system, they use quite a bit of power just for the CPU and two GPUs, then obviously you will have to get more watts. So 600 watts for a single card system using your standard Z, H or B motherboards and anything above that, you need to look at higher wattages. Here we do have the Fractal Design Edison M 750 watt power supply, plenty of juice to power this system. Let's go ahead and install it. So this particular power supply is a semi-modular power supply. What that means is it already comes with the 24 pin and the necessary cables already pre-installed. And then you have some sections here where you can put only the cables in that you need. Now this does reduce cable management. Uh, you don't have to use all of the cables. Therefore, you're leaving a lot of room free for cable management. Here we have the bag, which also comes with the power supply. This is all the cables there. So you might only need one SATA cable, one Molex cable and things like that just to power the accessories. In the box as well, we do have four screws. This will be for screwing the power supply into the case. So keep this handy because you will be needing these. So we've got our scissors. Uh, we're going to just remove this uh, big zip tie on here because we will be needing to use these cables here. Remove that, uh, the other zip tie can stay in place. So what we're going to do first is we're going to undo this little grill right here and then we will install that on the power supply and put the power supply inside of the case. Now, if you guys remember at the start of the video, I mentioned the 24 pin and the eight pin, which was on the motherboard. So we already have the 24 pin installed and we already have the eight pin installed as well. So we're good to go there. And of course, this one is for our graphics card. So we are good to go there. If you did want a second graphics card in there, then you would have to install more cables. So grab the little bracket that you took off the case and let's join this onto the power supply first before we actually put it in. 
So let's go ahead, thread these cables in first, bring them out to the back end of the case. Then of course we can slide the power supply in. Now before we go any further, we want to plug in all of our front I.O. panel connectors into the motherboard. This is a bit different depending on which motherboard you have. In your motherboard box, you will find a little book which will show you guys where to plug it all in. In this case, here's the page right here and we just have to follow this diagram to make sure that the connectors are plugged in the right way. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that our audio is installed, in order for our USB ports to work at the front, we need to install our USB cable. So let's bring that through the grommet here and then we will install it like so into this slot. Now I do like how with this case, they've actually put the grommets on the side a bit so that it sticks through like so and we don't have to see much of the cable. Really nice clean design on Fractal Design's part there. So once that's installed, our front USB should all work. We've got our power button and reset button. They should all be working now. And of course, our audio jacks. Now, the reason we did this now is because once we install the graphics card, we're going to have the graphics card in the way once we're trying to install all of these cables. So it's good that we do it now instead of later. And there's a reason why I'm doing everything in the order that I am, guys. Okay, let's move on to our fans. Firstly, we have to take the front panel off. As you can see, I simply pulled out the top and then you work your way down, pull out the bottom as well. You may need a bit of force for this and then pull it out like so. We also have a removable dust filter, which is good for keeping the dust out of the system. Simply push that back in place and we have access to the fan mounting position. So let's get our fans installed. So firstly, we're just going to remove the pre-existing fans because we want to install our own fans into the build. It's just simply four screws to remove it. So now that we remove that front fan, we can go ahead and install two of our Fractal Design fans on the front here. These are both 120 millimeter versions. Now, when installing fans, you need to think about airflow and case flow. You can install them one way and have the air pushing in and through the case, or you can install them the other way to exhaust air out of the case. Normally, in the front, you want air coming in so that it blows across the motherboard. Now, what that means is a general rule is to keep the logo on the back which means you will be bringing air in to the case. So now that we have everything in place, let's go ahead and install our SATA cable, which you can find in your motherboard box. Uh, there should be like two or three, maybe even four in there. Uh, choose one of them and let's go ahead and install that before we put the graphics card in. So all you need to do is simply put one end through the grommet and pull that through and the other end will plug into the motherboard slot that you can see down the bottom here. These are for connecting the motherboard to the SSD. So that plugs in just like so, and that's all we have to do for now. For a gaming PC, the bulk of your money you need to put towards the graphics card. This is what powers all of those gaming pixels, makes the screen look really nice and crisp, gives you that high refresh rate FPS in the games to accommodate your monitor. So here we have a 1070 Ti, which will slot in nicely into this system. But of course, you don't want to pair it with bad components either. So of course, we do have a good CPU and a good motherboard to match. Now, if you were to pair this particular card with a really old CPU, a really Really old motherboard that could withhold its full potential in performance so I definitely recommend putting the bulk of your money towards the graphics card for a gaming PC however do not cheap out on all of the other components as well let's get this graphics card installed so you want to start by removing the second expansion slot screw right here and because this is a two slot card, we will remove the next one as well, right underneath it. Now, keep these handy, uh, set them aside in your motherboard box, somewhere where you will remember them because we do not need them anymore for the build. So what you wanna do is grab your graphics card, fit it upside down and you wanna align the slots so that it can slot in like so. Uh, Make sure that this is all aligned up here and then just give it a gentle push 
into place like so. Now using the screws that you actually took out, let's screw this graphics card back in to keep it in place and stop it from shaking around. Now with a cooler like this, you want to try and figure out the particular style and look that you're going for. Which way do you want the tubes to go in the build? You can have them coming from the back of the case or you can have them coming from the front of the case. So let's go ahead and install the fans and we will see what particular way we want to mount this into the system. So I think because we already have the white RAM in the build and of course the silver graphics card, let's go ahead and use the provided fans because they are white so we'll have a bit of black in there, a bit of white and uh, let's go ahead and install Store them on the radiator. Now we're going to be sitting the radiator at the top of the case to exhaust the hot air out and out of the top. So we need to orientate these fans in a way to be able to take them out. Now remember how I said that the side with the sticker is bringing the air through like this. So when this fan is spinning, the front is pushing air through. So we want air going through the radiator and out the top. So we're going to be mounting them on like so. So you have screws included in the kit. So let's go ahead and start installing all of these onto the system. So now that we have the fans installed, the good thing about this radiator is it gives you a little fan port at the front here to plug your fans in. So you don't have to worry about plugging the fans into the motherboard at all. Really good way to save on cable management as well and provide power to the fans. So let's go ahead and we will plug both these fans in like so. And then we will get this all installed into the system. So that slots in like so. And then we are able to do this up on the top. So now that we have the radiator installed up the top, it's time to put our Intel mounting bracket at the back of the motherboard through the four holes. You'll see those four holes at the back. And basically this is our mounting bracket for the block to be mounted onto the CPU. So let's push that through the only four holes at the back so that we can install our CPU block. Okay, so they're pushed through, so now we need to install our mounting screws. So let's get them installed, then we can mount our CPU block. So to save myself a little time, I'm actually gonna go ahead and install the pump power now, so that nothing is getting in my way. So I'll slot that into the four pin CPU fan slot up here, and that will provide the pump with power. So it's slotted in now and we can remove this little plate right here. This has pre-applied thermal paste so you don't have to worry about getting your own. Let's get this all installed like so. Insert it over all four screws and then basically we just have to screw it down in place. Don't do the screws all the way up to begin with. Um, you want to try and keep a nice uniform motion while you are screwing this in place to make sure that any spread of thermal paste is spread evenly. Lucky for us, this is all pre-applied and already spread pretty good. So all four sides are in. Let's just tighten them all up now with the screwdriver. So now that we have the CPU block installed, I've actually installed our motherboard eight pin up the top here already as well. That saved for the issue of trying to get it in with the radiator installed. Let's go ahead and install our 24 pin and of course our six and eight pin CPU cable. I'm gonna do something a bit different though. I wanna spice this build a bit up. Let's go ahead and install some cable extensions. However, for you guys that don't have cable extensions, you will install your normal cables the exact same way. So let's go get them and you guys can follow along. So you guys can see right here that the GPU has an eight and a six pin power input. This is what this particular cable right here is for. Now, you guys will see this coming out of your power supply and you would plug it into there. You'd bring it through the cable grommet down underneath and then bring it up. If you guys have cable extensions, you leave this cable at the back 
you grab your cable extensions, you will stick them through the grommet and then into the GPU itself. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Now, while we are at this point, let's actually go ahead, grab one of our hard drive tray cages out and let's get our SSD installed. So if your SSD doesn't come with little screws to install it normally, the accessories box that you get out of the case normally has screws in it for your SSD. So you can see we've got four screws. We know that the cage actually inserts like this. So we want the side with all the ports on it to be facing the back like so. So this cable here that we plugged into the motherboard before, that plugs into the side of the SSD. And of course, the SATA power, which we spoke about before. This cable right here, this also powers the SSD. So we need to plug this in as well. So now that that's plugged in, we can go ahead and we can grab our 24 pin and we can plug this into our 24 pin up the top here, which is coming through like so. So that's plugged in now. So the motherboard has power. Then of course we have our graphics card power, which needs to be plugged in up the top here. So we'll bring those through. We have a six pin and an eight pin connector. So firstly, let's get the six pin in. Then we have the eight pin. Right, so the graphics card and the motherboard will now be getting supplied with power. We have two fan cables to plug in, so let's bring these around and in front and just plug them on the spare fan headers on the motherboard. Now we have a few cables to deal with here. We've got the 24 pin, got this one here, and we have the graphics card. So what we're going to do is we're going to bunch these ones up. Now these should fit down and underneath the tray like so. So I might get a zip tie and put all of these cables right here together. And then we should be able to push them in there and that will look nice and neat. Then for the 24 pin and the motherboard eight pin, we could use all of these little cable tire holes right here and bring that all the way down so it looks nice and neat. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have the 24 pin in place as well. So there you have it guys, a complete PC built from scratch, a nice gaming PC, certainly going to play the latest games at some good FPS. Uh, I tried to keep it nice and clean for you guys as well to demonstrate how easy it is to actually create a clean PC build. Now, obviously, you'd still put the tempered glass and that on, but I wanted to show you guys the inside and, of course, a bit of B-roll at the end, you know, that awesome PC graphics that you guys know and love. Let's actually turn it on, see if it works. So there you have it guys, I hope you all enjoyed this little guide, hopefully it helps some of you to create your own personal PC. It's very simple in the end, as long as you follow the instructions step by step. Uh, it's basically like an advanced Lego, but once you get used to it, it is really simple. So I hope that I address some concerns that any of you might have with building a PC, and if this was helpful, please give me a like, let me know down in the comments, and of course, if you guys do have experience with building PCs, please help out the guys in the comments as well who need to know extra questions. I'll be there as well, so leave your comments down below if you do have any concerns that you are worried about when building a PC. Like and subscribe, guys. We've got plenty of videos like this on the channel, and check out all of the custom PCs as well, and we'll see you guys in the next one.